Today, we're going to be learning how to draw large. So we are going to be drawing as um, using a magnifying glass. So we're going to pretend that we're outside and we're looking at all the different flowers and wildlife and everything around us, and we have a magnifying glass. What would you find underneath that magnifying glass if you brought it really close to some leaves or on some flowers or even the dirt if you're really curious about what is living and what goes on inside a garden? So let's use that as our inspiration. Today we're going to be using crayons and markers. You can also use watercolor if you would like and um, using a plastic baggie for your markers to get them wet and mix colors on or just simply a brush with some water. So there's many different options here and let's take a look at the next slide. So what type of bugs do you find around a garden? Well there's many types. These are just a few images that I have here. We've got bees that like to come up to flowers and ladybugs and caterpillars. You might discover a beetle, a butterfly, or even a grasshopper. Take a time or a moment, think of a time that you might have gone to a garden or looked outside and saw an animal climbing up a branch or a bee come over to a flower, maybe even a hummingbird. If you were able to stop and have a magnifying glass and just take a closer look, what would it look like? What would you see? Would something change? So that's what we're gonna do today. Instead of having a camera, we're gonna pretend that you're holding a magnifying glass and you're gonna draw what you have discovered. So here, let's take a look. I have um, our final drawing of what I had practiced, but you can create your own version and I'll show us how to do that too. And then also here's a little video that I'll show us as a small clip so we could talk about some different flowers and butterflies and things that we see up close. Also take notice what type of flowers are animals attracted to? Are they one color? Are they bright colors? Are they not bright colors? Just take a minute to think about that as I pass out our papers. Here is my example that we're going to be working on or taking a look at as I build today. So in order to make our microscope, what you're going to do first is on your piece of paper, you can use a circle tracer or if for my example here, I have a small paper plate and figure out where do you want to place your magnifying glass. It could be anywhere on this piece of paper. And then you're going to use a crayon, a pencil, permanent marker, whatever you have to go around the paper plate. We are going to be coloring it in using either markers, watercolor paint, or crayons or color pencils, whichever you have available to you. So once you've created that first circle, the next thing I recommend to do is we're going to put a dot at each important corner. In between those, do another dot. So now you can see I have all of these dots that helps me connect them and form a curve. 
You can always turn your paper to help you with this. And don't worry if it's not exact. I think that just adds a little bit more fun to the piece. The next thing I'm going to have you do is trace the shape of your thumb, pretending that you're holding on to this magnifying glass. And then we'll go in and we'll draw a nail. After that, let's place the handle part into our magnifying glass by drawing those two lines. And think about now when you're holding something, you always have that other finger. So let's draw a curve, almost like a rainbow, and then we'll make a little mark there. And that'll just pretend that it's a finger bent. So now think about your magnifying glass. How do you want to decorate it? Do you want to draw little bugs around it? Do you want to have different patterns or lines inside? You could do curly cues. You could keep it a solid color. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just going around and I'm adding in some fun little lines and shapes just to make it a little different. If you want at this moment, you can always use a particular crayon color and color it in. After that, go to the work on the handle. And here you could do the same thing. You could draw lines going down on angles, and you could also go in and just add different types of textures and fun things. You can even write your name on it if you would like as well. Once your magnifying glass is done, think about what are you going to put inside? What are you going to magnify and make large? We looked at various different types of animals and bugs that we might find when you take a look at a flower and um, a leaf and different things. So what we want to do is start in here and make whatever it is really big. So I'm going to draw just a huge leaf. You could draw a flower really zoomed in. You could draw just a leaf. And on this leaf, I'm going to draw myself a ladybug. You could add a little worm. You could add a caterpillar, a bumblebee, ladybug, whatever something that is fun for you. Could even be a cute little spider. The reason I'm using crayons, which you could also use a permanent marker or a color pencil as well, is when we put the watercolor or wet marker over it, it won't move. It'll stay right where it is. This is called water resist. Once you've added in your bug, which you could add in a couple, I'm just going in and now I'm drawing my lines for my leaf. I also thought it would be fun to add in a flower. So here I'm just going to draw a part of a flower. And remember, other things always overlap. So if you don't have to worry about seeing all of the flower. You could just see part of it and part of the petals. Now the next part is we're going to work our way outside of the magnifying glass. And in order to give the illusion that if something looks like it's in a magnifying glass, I'm going to draw the flower small. So there's the first half, and then there is my second half. And you can see I made it a lot smaller. Now comes the fun part. You can add different branches or leaves. I'm going and adding a little bit more of the leaf kind of peeking out, so it gives that illusion there too. But you can add in whatever you're feeling like. 
You could have other animals and bugs flying around, but just try not to make anything larger than what your magnifying glass has. You'll also notice there's not just one way to make flowers. You could draw a circle and then you can draw lines coming off of it and connect them. And that's one way to make a leaf of a flower or flower petals. Here I'm drawing a tiny little ladybug on top of this flower. So enjoy just adding different things. You could just have floating flowers, whatever it is that you're feeling. Notice I did the circle, I have the lines, and now I'm connecting the tops to make that flower. So decorate the rest of your paper in what you think you would come across in a garden or wherever you would bend down to take a look at some animals on flower. Once you've added all your detail, now comes the fun part. We're going to color this. 
So you have many different options. You can use a plastic bag and use one of our water brushes, as you can see here. You just have the water on it and it can either spread the marker that you put on your bag or you can paint the marker on your paper and spread it that way. And finally, you can also use a watercolor tray. We've had lots of practice this year using our watercolor. But remember, when you grab it, get it nice and wet, and you should have just a drop of water. And look how much paint comes off on just that drop. It should never look like regular paint where it's really dark and you realize that you can't um, you know, spread the paint, you see a tons of brush strokes, and that usually means that we need to add some more water. So another trick that I do enjoy doing is just filling the shape that I want with a small amount of water. And you can see in the video it's shining, it has a little less um, paint on it, but when I go with a tiny drop of another color, it makes little fireworks on here and spreads really well. And having the water in the area that I want it to the color will only stay where that water is. So you don't have to worry about it touching or mixing outside of the shape. So there's lots of techniques and tricks when you're using watercolor. What I recommend is to let an area dry around it first. So say if I wanted to do the background of this flower where it's at and I wanna have lots of greens, it's gonna spread a little too much. So here you can see just a tiny, tiny amount and it wipes off on my finger where it turns back to clear. I'm not using a lot. I'm just using water that has a little bit of purple to it. Here I squeezed my brush and I put some water on this uh, tulip or rose part and I'm just getting my red a little bit wet. So I'm gonna dip into that tiny little puddle there you can see it's just a little drop and I'm going to place it on top of the water area that I put and now you can see it kind of do a little firework. There's a lot more water here so you'll notice it just takes a little bit of time but you can mix colors on this shape too and I know it looks like a big puddle of water but it really is not a lot but if you're concerned that you have too much you can grab a Kleenex and you can just dab it off with a tiny little bit. So here it removed a lot of the color as you can see, but it's still nice and wet. So I can go in and I can do the same thing. And the less water, the darker it's going to be, right? When I have a lot of water, it's gonna look a little bit more pink. So those are just some fun little tips and tricks that you can do. I use some of the color and spread it around in different areas. I'm going to add it to my ladybug here a little bit, but it might need to dry in that area too. There's a lot of water there. You can also use just a tiny bit of marker in some areas too in your wet brush and it spreads the marker all over. So now think about all the colors that you wanna use. Do you wanna work in another area? See here, I'm just putting a little bit of water on my paper and I'm going to use some different greens. But I'm gonna show you with my marker first. So here I'm gonna put my marker just a little bit on the plastic bag. Aluminum foil does the same trick too. And I'm just gonna dab and dot it all around the back. What I enjoy doing with this is you can use a couple different greens. This is a lighter green, but I also have a darker green. You could add some blues to get some color choices in there. Even a little bit of purple is fun too. So use whatever you have. If you're using crayon for the background, add some layers with some crayon. Just kind of scribble some of the colors on there and you'll notice it just looks really fun and good. You can mix the colors this way on your baggie. You could also mix it on your paper and just enjoy creating your background painting with everything that you're doing. If some color escapes, just again, use the little Kleenex and it takes it right off. And if it's not doing it right away, just add a little bit of water and dab it off and there you'll go.
This is the second trick using a marker. So if you take a marker and you outline, make it nice and thick wherever you would like it to be, then what you can do is come back with water on your brush and it will wake everything up. And depending on how far you get in your project today, just remember at the very end when you're done to wipe off your plastic bag so we can reuse it next time.